like SOB, I think it's probably certainly your funniest film and probably your most acid film uh, compared with what you did in the party to um, have a few digs at Hollywood. This time you've really gone for the heart and under the ribs. Do you feel you've achieved what you set out to do? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. I, I don't think it's a perfect film by any means. I don't think I've ever made a perfect film. And uh, what I mean by that is that most of the films that I do, I see later on and think, oh God, I wish I had done it this way or changed it. I guess everybody pretty much does that about their work. But uh, the thing that pleases me most is the reaction. Uh, what has happened uh, prior to doing and since the making of the film. Uh, it has totally validated the film. Uh, people, uh, I find, I'm uh, delivering lines that are practically right out of the film. I mean, uh, I feel that for the first time in my life that something that I have done has been totally validated, and I guess therefore vindicated in a way. <laughs> I mean, it, is, it has really become life imitating art. Julie said the film was written about 10 years ago. Uh, given that Heaven's Gate has happened now, do you feel this is a case of uh, life imitating art? Yeah, I'm sorry for uh, the people involved in Heaven's Gate. It, uh, it certainly was opportune in, in that respect. Uh, Heaven's Gate is not new in Hollywood. I mean, we've had Heaven's Gate continually throughout the history of Hollywood. It's just, you know, relative. So, I mean, certainly the, uh, the hue and cry uh, was raised when uh, they made uh, Cleopatra, you know, and uh, I got a little bit of it when, uh, a little bit of it, a lot of it when I made Darling Lily. It uh, went over and it wasn't successful. So, I mean, Heaven's Gates are always around. You mentioned Darling Lily. Is the Robert Vaughan character anyway Robert Evans? I won't answer that. <laughs> you'll, you'll have to decide that for yourself. I can only say that there is nobody in the film, uh, there are no characters in the film that are precisely anybody else. One of the very funniest characters is the gossip columnist played by Loretta Twitt. Yes. But it's interesting, in a sense, she appears to belong to the generation of Hedda Hopper, of Luella Parsons, and I suppose Sheila Graham. Do, in fact, gossip columnists still hold this almost witch-like sway? Uh, well, we don't really have any now that do, that I can think of, but uh, they're very indigenous to that town, and there'll be another one springing up very soon, I'm sure. And uh, uh, she also, like all the other characters, is a composite. And uh, a lot of the stuff that I drew on uh, dates back to the times of the Hoppers and Sheila Graham and people like that, uh, incidents that occurred in Hollywood, but then in the 30s and in the 40s and in the 50s. Not necessarily now, but it's very contemporary because that stuff just still exists. The mentality hasn't changed. Those things still occur. Inevitably, one of the key points in the film is that uh, Julie bears her breath. Clearly, this isn't the nub of the film, but do you think there's a danger that the film will be seen in, in very much the terms that the Richard Mulligan character is putting it over? Oh, I, don't, I hope it is. Uh, it further validates my philosophy about it. I mean, I don't particularly like the idea of exploiting my wife's breasts, but the whole concept uh, is designed to prove that, that that sort of thing is the way the Robert Vaughn character would think. And, and everything, as I said, that has happened so far, particularly regarding that, has proved that that's the way it is viewed. It's interesting in, your, in the structure of your script that, in fact, it is Richard Mulligan, the producer, who locks himself in the garage and turns on the motor, whereas the director, Bill Holden, um, carries on much as before. Um, you're saying, in effect, are you, that it's the, it's the producer who carries the can while the director can perhaps escape? I mean, in your r role as producer-director, no, this is a problem. No, not at all. Uh, that's just the way this particular story turned out, rather than make it so identifiable and make it the, the director, uh, I thought that it, the, the choice could just as easily be a producer, and I mean, I certainly know somebody that that happened to, and uh, when he became near suicidal, and he was a producer.
and he was a producer of many, many hits, none of them very good, <laughs> but uh, they all made a lot of money. And he finally made the gigantic flop, and it was just almost too much to bear. Uh, obviously, uh, his dementia is exaggerated in my film, but I, I always, when I perceive something that can be humorous, uh, am prone to carry the humor that far. I find very interesting, I mean, your casting is joyous. Um, it's nice to see Peter Gunn as presumably Dr. Hopper being pilloried by his wife and indeed ending up in the next bed and helpless. Uh, Robert Preston again, a delight, the character there. Now, he based it all on uh, the little doctor who runs around with B12 shots. Sure, yeah, there are a lot of them. There were several in my uh, formative years in Hollywood that uh, would be that character. And the B12 was the panacea for all ills. Mm -hmm. It's also, I thought, which is a, a very skillful piece of filmmaking, and uh, I say filmmaking because it's difficult, you're the writer and the director, and therefore it's, it's difficult to portion blame or praise to the writer and the director, but it's interesting that you can kill off Robert Mulligan halfway through, and still the movie continues with, with a fascinating momentum right the way through to the end. Well, that's the thing that concerned me most, because I, I don't believe that, that many uh, vehicles have that uh, uh, kind of structure. And I knew it was dangerous, and I knew it was, it was imperative that, that once that happened, and once my audience, if, if they were involved, were shocked by it, that I had to get back on the track. And, uh, and the best way, I think, to get back on the track is to, to suddenly become outrageous, and, and therefore the stealing of the corpse. And, and, uh, Did you use the Ken Swafford character to kind of bridge that from outside the sound stage onto the scene where Mulligan gets shot, the studio guard who then turns up. Yes. But that was deliberate, wasn't it? Yes. Uh -huh. um, the, in fact, the stealing of the corpse, I mean, there is an apocryphal Hollywood story, is there not? Yes. And this, this, is, this is based on it. That's right. And did you find um, a preview that people were shocked by this, or by that time had they been accustomed to your really very black edge to the film? No, I, interestingly, so far all of the previews uh, have been uh, very well accepted that people really laugh and they seem to be very involved. And uh, that pleases me. I mean, because it isn't just a comedy, as mm. far as I'm concerned. It's filled with, you know, a lot of, of other things. No, the comedy comes out of what is uh, clearly a lot of pain yeah. uh, of the creative artist who, in fact, finds himself being butchered by the financial mafia, if you like. That's right. And in fact, I mean, there's almost fast in the sense he's willing to sell his soul, or at least everything he owns, and do everything his wife owns in order to have yet another go at his own thing. That's right, but he is his own devil in a way, and uh, yeah. that's true. Did you have in your own mind when you were writing and making the film what sort of film Nightwind was? Well, uh, yeah, it was, it was typical of a particular period where they made uh, films that were all kind of gloss and glamour and uh, uh, that's that's the way I saw it. I can't really name anyone offhand because then that you might start spotting who my producer character is. Finally, does the film make you laugh? Uh, certain things in it, uh, yeah. Certain things that press does, and uh, moments that uh, uh, that I like particularly. Uh, I enjoy it because my daughter's in it and she does a wonderful job. And there's a lot of things that I like about it. I giggle occasionally. Finally, Blake, thank you very much indeed.